Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to start with a simple question. Who fears robots will take eventually all our jobs? Anyone? Okay, some people seem to think so. I don't. And next few minutes, I'll try to explain you why. But to do so, I'll go back in time a couple of years when we started a project that aimed to introduce collaborative robots in the manufacturing industry. Now, this is not a, an industry where people are really happy to in, have robots working with them. Robots have been there behind fences and safely put away, correlating with job loss, etc. So, when we entered there, we asked the uh, workers there and the operators, well, what do you think about robots? Well, many of them feared that they would take their jobs. So when we, and we as several people from academia and other companies in Flanders, um, from industry, also experts in artificial intelligence, we made sure that we took these fears into account and we exposed these, these workers to robots. Robots, not only those robots they knew already from the factory, but also entertainment robots, um, collaborative robots. And collaborative robots may not, are not there to replace people. Collaborative robots are made to support our work. And they are made, in a way, through sensors and algorithms and all these other things to work, let us work safely with them without any fences. But of course, we have to convince those people, those operators to work with these robots. And to do so, we asked them, what do you, how do you like to work with these robots? Do you like to push buttons? Do you like something else? Well, they mostly liked to interact with them if they had to work with them, as they had interacted with humans. They would like to talk with, that, with them. But talking to them, to robots, is not that easy in a noisy factory. So, slightly below that, just as we humans do, they said, okay, we also want to interact with gestures. So we made sure we, interact, that we let them interact with gestures. We also lo then looked what jobs could these robots do. If you need a collaborative robot, in a factory, it needs to do a useful job. And it turns out that the most suitable job was one of the few jobs we made, uh, in the uh, part of the factory that constructs, in which the body of the car is constructed, where humans did, still did all the work. Well, as is, um, is the case, the, uh, this body of the car needed to be strengthened in some parts. And to do that, uh, and back then, workers needed to take metal reinforcement pieces from a box, walk over to a small table, put uh, glue on that with a heavy glue gun, and then walk to the body of the car and put the, uh, the part on the body of the car. Now, putting this glue on there for one or two or maybe 10 or 20 times isn't that hard although some people are a little bit inconsistent, but doing that a few times and times a day is uh, very difficult even for more for experienced people. So there were inefficiencies there and with potential problems for the end product, the car, and you want the car to be safe. So putting on the glue is the part that the robot does. But that the robot can't pick up the re metal reinforcement piece, it's simply too hard, it's not handy enough to do that, and it can't correct, it's very hard for the robot to find a metal piece that's randomly placed in a box. And so we needed um, still humans to do that. And so humans put, take these metal pieces, put them on a cart, drive to the uh, robot, and then walk a bit back 
and go in front of the camera. And when going in front of the camera, they make a few simple gestures like, okay, there's, you need to glue these pieces on the raft. You need only to glue those pieces that need to be on the uh, car, car with two doors. And, okay, I'm sure, okay, you understood. So, and then the, rob the robot starts. And the robot puts glue on it. When it's finished, it makes it clear to the operator that it's finished, and he can take this, the glued parts and put them on the body of the car. Now, what was the result of this operation? Well, as Walt, as this robot is called, uh, it's very consistent in the application of the, uh, of the glue and uses always the optimal track. Uh, quality of the, the gluing significantly decreased as well as the amount of glue was reduced. So, the factory owners were pleased because, well, better quality means less loss of material and stuff like that. But what about the workers? Were they happy? Yes, they were happy. They integrated Walt in, his, in the team. They gave him a nickname. And they made jokes about him. They told their family, their friends, they were extremely proud of him. Walt didn't only support quality work, he also made the operators proud. Okay, you might say, okay, Walt in the factory, that's a nice thing, but there's, most of us are not work operators in a factory. Most of us won't even come in a factory. So, isn't there any robot that is, well, something, a robot that we come into contact with? Well, that's the case. Most of us have actually come into contact with robots and much, much bigger ones even. We have even come, been in robots, as you might see, if you see this robot. Well, this robot, you say, that's a plane, that's not a robot. Well, actually, we can consider a plane to be a robot. Why? Well, because as this specific type of uh, plane, a jet plane, uh, jet engine airplane, is automated to such a degree that uh, pilots only interact with the instruments in the cockpit for about three to seven minutes. And most of that time of these interactions with the cockpit are spent before the ta plane takes off. They have to specify where they fly to, they have to interact with the air traffic controller, to, say, to get clearance to leave, etc. But during regular flights, after that, most of the time they're not interacting their instruments. It's not that they're not doing nothing in this, this cockpit. Air pilots, uh, pilots are there for a reason. They, among others, need to look at the weather, see whether any thunderstorm is coming and whether they need to fly through it or fly around it. They also need to talk to us, passengers, and the rest of their crew, to make sure when an incident happens, such as half of the motor falling down, as happened a few weeks ago, we, that we stay calm and that, we, uh, that they show that the situation is under control. And even in more disastrous situations, when the plane isn't able to land in the airport anymore, that they can take alternative routes and land the plane on a river, as happened a few years ago. So, to, all the, to do all this, they need also an good instruments in the uh, cockpit. They need good screens that display only that information that they can process, and they need the controls to act on it. And with all... Uh, through cooperation with several disciplines, they can do so and reduce the, the workload so that they can take the appropriate actions even in cases of disaster. But of course, while we come into contact with these robots, it's, we are not really 
interacting with them. We are just passengers. Um, are there any other situations where we come into contact and where we might be operating with robots? Well, even the less fortunate of us are today working with robots. People that suffer from multiple sclerosis and have to uh, rehabilitate often for uh, if they had a collapse. Then they work, can work now with robots and through games which are connected to these robots to make their rehabilitation process not only successful but also more pleasurable, more enjoyable. In this way, they can regain their strength and be operational, feel better throughout the rest of their daily lives. But to do so, this robot needs to be instructed by the physiotherapist how to support the patient and it needs to be adapted to the, the strength of the patient to support or uh, to give force against it so that he can gain strength. In other situations, such as we can see here, there's more creative people that can also work from rather with robots. In Fab Labs, people are already working with machines to construct 3D objects from simple 2D surfaces. Um, doing so, however, requires sometimes less handy situations where you might want help from a third hand. This third hand can be offered by a robot, and as a, some students of us demonstrated a couple of months ago, we can make software that translates these models in the 3D environment directly into actions that uh, uh, can steer the robot without any knowledge of how to control the robot. Just specifying the model in the 3D environment allows them to be supported by the robot in the laboratory to construct their 3D materials in a fab lab. But even that might be too far off for us. So, well, we can also work with robots in our home with such thing as this one. A robot that helps us do the annoying thing of vacuum cleaning. Especially if we have animals, etc. this can be a really annoying job. So, this, through appropriate interaction with this uh, robot, we can have this an enjoyable experience. Because as it turns out, people don't only like the fact that the, the robot can do a very good job in vacuum cleaning, they also just like watching it and might even give it a name, just as the, op the operators in the factory. So, if we conclude, we can feel better when we work together with robots. But going back to the fear in the beginning of my talk, we have to acknowledge, and we can see from the examples uh, I've just shown, that yes, we and robots are doing actually very different things. We peep in these scenarios. We people are good at, in, at making sense of a situation, to have common sense or insights, we are very dexterous, we can do very many things with our hands and feet, etc. And we have ingenuity, integrity, etc. Robots, on the other hand, have precision, repetition, computation, memory. And while all these things can make it seem like they can have these things that are associated with us, they don't really have these things, and we actually don't know yet how to give them these things. So, to be able to use all these good things of robots and to accomplish these things, we should work with robots. But we can only do so through appropriate interfaces. And if we make these interfaces appropriate and control the robots, as we have seen, we can not lose our jobs, but do quality work supported by robots we can feel better and we can just 
become even better or better persons or better strength at all. So, and isn't this all a thing we all like? So, okay, thank you.